Hello guys, in this video I'm going to explain the timer instructions briefly, which are pulse timer, extended pulse timer, on delay timer, retentive on delay timer, and off delay timer. After that, I'll use the timer instructions to implement some simple industrial projects in the next video. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Okay, let's start the video. I configured my Sematic 300 station in the previous videos. If you don't have any real PLC, you can click on the project name, then right click and use the S7 program option. Now let's open the main blog inside the S7 program folder and also select the ladder language for writing my programs. Well, in this video, we are going to learn the timer instructions, which are called pulse, extended pulse, on delay, retentive on delay, and off delay timers. Let's use the first one. I should select a name for the inserted timer. The name of timers include the T letter plus a number. For example, T0. Now, the inserted timer starts the T0 timer if there is a positive edge at its first input, the start input. Note that a signal change is always necessary in order to enable the timer. The timer runs as long as the signal is set at the first input is 1. However, the longest period is the time value specified by the second input, the TV input. There is a specific format to enter a time. It starts with S5 plus time OT, and then we need to use the sharp sign and the desired time with its unit. Now the enter time is 5 seconds. The next input, reset, can be used to reset the timer. On the other side, the signal is stayed at the first output, Q, is 1, as long as the timer is running. If there is a change from 1 to 0 at the first input, the timer will be stopped. In this case, the signal is set at output, Q, is 0. The current time of the timer can be scanned by the next two outputs. Out of these two outputs, need a road memory. In other words, 16 bits to restore the current time. These two outputs use different formats to restore the current time. The first one, BI, is a binary coded, and the next output uses the BCD format. The current time is the preset time value at the second input, minus the time elapsed since the timer was started. Remember, a word memory includes two bytes and MW3 is the next free address of the PLC memory after MW1. Now let's test the timer using the PLC SIM simulator. Well, based on my program, I need to change my virtual modules. The timer is enabled by M0.0 and reset by M0.1. 
so I need to access to the PLC memory. Also, I want to see the status of the first digital output. Now, let me click here to add a timer module to see the timer status. Now, let's download and test the program using the PLC system simulator. Okay, let's enable the timer. As you can see, the output of the timer is on for the first five seconds. After that, its output is off. Let's test the timer again. Note that I can modify the stored value on an address of my PLC memory directly. Well, the timer time is stored in these two addresses. I can see the status using the PLC simulator. I need to add memory modules, write an address, and then select its numeric format. Okay, now let's increase the preset time value and then test the program again. Note that the base time is 100 milliseconds and I have to multiply this number by 100 milliseconds to get the correct time. Also, both of these two addresses use 16 bits to restore the current time. I need to specify how these 16 bits should be read and used by selecting the correct numeric data type. Well, as I mentioned earlier, every time I can use this input of the timer to stop and reset the timer. Alright, I'll test it the first timer, I mean the pulse timer. You can use the help window to learn the timer instructions in details. For example, here you can see how this 5 time format uses 16 bits to restore a time. Also, this table shows different base times. Now, let's search elementary data types inside the help window. Okay, most of these formats were explained in the previous videos. Here, you can see the S5 time format, its range and examples. Remember, you can also use the question sign to learn each instruction. For example, let's click on the on-delay timer. All right, here you can see the name of each input and output of the on-delay timer. A description that tells us how it works, a diagram that illustrates its performance, and finally an example of using the on-delay timer. Let me explain the diagram. Well, when I activate an on-delay timer, after a specific delay, its output will be on. Before that, if I disable the timer, the output will remain off. And every time, I can use its third input to reset it. Now, pay attention here. 
we can use the timer instructions using the next category. For example, let's add an undelayed timer to my program. First, I need to determine a timer, for example, T1. Then I have to specify my desired delay. For example, it can be 10 seconds. Now, let me use a normally open contact to enable my undelayed timer T1. Let's use the undelayed timer to turn on a digital output. Finally, I need a reset call to stop the timer. Again, let's use the PLC simulator to test the program. Okay, let's start the inserted pulse timer and also the undelay timer. As you see, the pulse timer is on only during the first 10 seconds. And after that, I mean after 10 seconds, the output of the undelay timer has turned on. Okay, now let's see this simple industrial circuit which uses an undelay timer. When I press the start push button, the first motor is on for 5 seconds, and after that, the second motor will be on instead of the first motor automatically. Well, let's press the stop push button and then test the circuit again. Okay, try to write a program to implement the logic of this control circuit using the Semantic Manager software. That's simple. In the next video, I'll do that for you and also I'll do another project using factory I.O. software to learn how the timer instructions can be used for a simple industrial process. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.